वॉट इज वायरलेस और वायरलेस लैन और डब्ल्यू लैन नेटवर्क सो वायरलेस और वाई फाई इज एक्चुअली वायरलेस फिडेलिटी इन सम ऑफ द लिटरेचर सम ओल्ड बुक्स यू विल फाइंड दैट वाई फाई स्टैंड फॉर वायरलेस फिडेलिटी एंड सम लिटरेचर सम बुक्स विल से नो इट डज नॉट बट इन जनरल टर्म्स वी कैन से वाई फाई स्टैंड फॉर वायरलेस फिडेलिटी सो वाई फाई और डब्ल्यू लैन इट्स अ नेटवर्क इन विच डिवाइस आर कनेक्टेड विदाउट वायरस विदाउट केबल्स डायरेक्टली थ्रू एयर इंटरफेस राइट थ्रू रेडियो सिग्नल्स जस्ट लाइक आवर मोबाइल फोन कनेक्ट टू द मोबाइल नेटवर्क टू टावर्स विदाउट एनी केबल ऑल दो आवर मोबाइल फोन हैव केबल्स बट दोज आर फॉर चार्जिंग आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट दैम आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट डेटा केबल्स टू ट्रांसफर द डेटा और टू गेट द इंटरनेट सो दिस इज कॉल्ड वाई फाई और डब्ल्यू लैन और वायरलेस लोकल एरिया नेटवर्क डब्ल्यू फॉर वायरलेस एंड लैन इज लोकल एरिया नेटवर्क so it allows us to easily access our network without any cables for example for mobile devices like smartphones or tablets or any other device it is mainly used for end device connectivity like laptops mobile security cameras wifi printers smart tvs all of these kind of devices but it does not mean that everything has gone wireless now most of our network still stays connected through wires so at our home in a typical network or at our office usually we we have a wifi router some devices are connected through wires like desktops and printers but most of the devices are connected through wifi like mobile phones like our laptops our tablets and then from wifi router to the, our isp to internet service provider and onwards to the internet the worldwide internet it is always a wired connection you might have seen very seldom that a wifi device or a wifi router is connected further through wirelessly because wireless it gives us flexibility but it also has its own demerits first of all it's not so secure so we can easily bring down a wifi we can easily hack a wifi network through an external network card which runs aircrack ng in kali linux or any other similar tool so it's very easy to bring down a wifi network to hack a wifi network i made a video on it last time you guys can follow it i'll share the link in description so that's why we always use in our offices especially we use wired network why because it's so secure the second problem with wifi or wireless networks is speed and reliability so you might have seen that wifi sometime it goes up and down whenever there is interference whenever your neighbors are running their wifi router on the same channel same band like 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz then it starts interfering and then your network is intermittent but if you have cable and your neighbor also has cable network there is no problem right because you have your dedicated media so that's the problem with wifi or wireless network but the best thing is flexibility that's why almost all the devices as of today especially in our homes they are wirelessly connected right so it has its merits and demerits but 80% of our network is still through wired our switches our routers our data center connections our internet service provider internal cabling everything is wired especially through fibers because fibers or copper ethernet cable they give us higher data rate and more reliability more security as compared to wireless the official standard just like ethernet it has 802.3 so wireless has a different standard which is 802.11 you might have seen whenever you buy a device a new mobile phone a new laptop it tells you that okay it supports 802.11 ac ax bng wifi 4 wifi 5 and these days even wifi 6 is very common so this is the official standard even if i go to my laptop and i click on network connections in here on the properties so it shows me on windows 10 that my laptop is connected to the internet through wifi 
4 4 is the standard and the code is 802.11n and it is using 2.4 gigahertz band and using its first channel and then the speed you can see here one my wi-fi is giving currently 144 megabits per second which is maximum 144 which is very less if i connect it through a cable the cable will give me easily one giga which means 1000 mb that's why uh, in offices and in whenever we need reliability we always prefer wired connection but of course wi-fi has its own merits which is the biggest one is flexibility another important point about wireless or wi-fi is that it is usually half duplex but still we get enough speed i made another video on half and full duplex communication you guys can watch that one on the same channel and the second thing another important point is that wi-fi uses ism frequency band ism stands for industrial scientific and medical bands and these are the bands which does not need any license which means if you want to start a wi-fi network at your home you don't need to have a license right just like we buy a wi-fi router or our our isp gives us a network connection a new internet connection they install a wi-fi router we start running it without any license why because we are usually running 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz frequency band which does not need any license so it is ism band this is very important interview question most of these things are related to uh, network engineer interview questions then what is ssid ssid is called as service set identifier in simple words it is just the name of your wi-fi network when we are configuring the wi-fi device at that time we give it a name to our network we can have more than one ssid through one device as well so this is just a name just like if we click here on our network on our wi-fi uh, icon then we can see here nw network wi-fi is the name of the network of the wi-fi network so this is called ssid service set identifier service set id this one has ssid which is brand x internet this one has service id which is bronco so this is just a name and it can be duplicate as well it does not create any problem right so this is called ssid then how does a typical home wi-fi router look like what is it what we buy or what our isp is giving us so usually in our small offices or our home wi-fi network we usually have this kind of device some models they look like this with multiple antennas with MIMO multiple input multiple output or sometime multi-user multi-input multi-output MUMI MO and some I think this is Netgear and this is Cisco typical wi-fi router but most of them they have common properties on the back end they will have a power cord they will have few ports and a usb as well and a reset button so usually the most important thing is we have one van port this van port means wide area network this goes towards the isp and then lan ports we have usually four or six or eight ports depending on the model of the router which you are buying and the cost so it has LAN 1, LAN 2, LAN 3, which means we can connect some devices through cables. But most of the devices, if we are connecting through Wi-Fi, we don't need to use these yellow ports. The colors can be different, but this is the common color for LAN. We use yellow color for when usually it's blue or light blue color. So that kind of home Wi-Fi device, it's like a hybrid device. It's not a router. It's not a switch. So it's a combination of a small switch. This yellow portion you can see is a switch and between this switch and this van connection we have a small router which can do only default routing i made a detailed video that how or which kind of devices are our home wi-fi router so that is very insightful you can watch that video and usually they have small modules small capability for security for dhcp services to assign the ip addresses NAT to convert public to private and private to public IP addresses, quality of service and some other features depending on how expensive or which brand or which router you are going to buy. And uh, this is all about Wi-Fi or wireless LAN that what is Wi-Fi or wireless LAN, how does it work 
and in the next videos i'll discuss about wi-fi standards that what is a b g n a c a x what is wi-fi 5 wi-fi 6 i'll also discuss that which bands do these wi-fi's use where does wi-fi belong to the overall spectrum right how to remember it which types of bands are we using how many channels each band allows us like 14 or 22 how does 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi work which channels can be used in which country can they overlap or not what is 5 gigahertz what is unii and which frequency bands we can use how does the signal strength it decreases when we move away from our wi-fi access point what are the security standards how to configure and which one is more strong which one is less strong and then of course a practical lab how to configure wi-fi which type of wi-fi topologies some basic terms about frequency how does the interfere interference from wi-fi sources and non-wi-fi sources can affect our wi-fi right and then in the end we'll discuss some questions as well so let me ask you a question to test your knowledge please tell me which one is wi-fi 6 standard out of these four is it g n a x or a c you can write your answer in the comment section another question is which are the two wi-fi bands which are used commonly is it 2 gigahertz or 2.4 and 5 or 2.4 and 6 or 5 or 6 and another question is that which wi-fi interference do you think is more severe more damaging is it co-channel is it adjacent channel or is it non-wi-fi sources like from microwave ovens and cordless phones and all of that and how many non-overlapping channels can our wi-fi 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi band give us is it two channel which do not interfere with each other can run independently is it 2 14 4 12 or 3 or something else so you guys can answer these questions and stay tuned if you need any information if you have any question you guys can ask about what is wi-fi and in the next parts of the videos next parts of this wi-fi series wireless series i'll be making videos on these wireless standards so thank you for watching any questions please write in the comment section